So today we're going to kind of go over how we set up an arterial line here in this department and we'll touch on, usually we're going to use the radial, but we'll touch a little bit on a femoral heart lines and also for the bow because you'll need to set up a transducer for that. And so we've kind of got our supplies laid out here for what we're going to need. I'm just going to go over the radial heart line first and what all we'll need for that. So to actually get your setup ready to go, you're going to need a 500 mil saline bag, a transducer kit, and a pressure bag. And then the physician will need the art line catheter for the radial arteries. They usually prefer these longer ones. And all of this stuff can be found in the Texas over here for the most part. This is where all of your art line stuff is going to be. And they'll also need a water prep to clean with. And then after insertion, a lot of times they'll sew it in. Usually they're going to use O-Silk. This is viral, but we'll pretend like it's silk. Um, a vibe patch, and then a big tegaderm to go over it as well. For radial art lines, they'll usually put them on an arm board as well, and uh, help keep everything nice and straight while they're inserting it. To sew it in, you'll need a general purpose tray kit as well. And then I usually grab a couple bags of 4 by 4s just because it can be a little bloody. So as far as actually getting it set up, you'll take your 500 bag as well. And I usually go ahead and just set it in a pressure bag that you're not going to inflate it just yet. Before you actually use it on the patient, you're going to switch out to these little white caps here that don't have a vent in them. But you'll have to prime each of your little ports first before you change those out. So I'm going to go ahead and open those up. So you'll get your kit set up. Go ahead and clamp off your roller clamp. You're going to spike your bag of saline. And one step that you need to try to remember to do is you actually need to burp your bag. So I don't know if you can see, usually they'll come with air in them. Um, so you need to kind of burp that air out. So you're going to open up your clamp and you're just going to kind of squeeze the air out of this bag here. It's kind of tricky because you have to do it and also pull this little puncher too. Until you can get it to start dripping saline in there. And once you can get that air out of the bag, then you can go ahead and prime the rest of your art line setup. So to do that, even when this cap is closed or open, even when it's open, and um, you'll have to pull on this little plunger to actually prime the bag. So I like to go ahead and just prime everything all the way to the end, and then I prime the vented caps as well. So you'll just pull the plunger, and you can see it kind of rolling through here. You'll prime it all the way to a drip. After you do that, the next step that you need to do is before you change out these caps, you need to flush them out. So you're going to turn it off away from the cap and you want it open to the bag because that's where you're going to prime it out. So then you're going to prime it to where it just squirts out there. Turn it off and you'll remove this and you'll replace it with a non-vented cap. And then there's actually one more down here you have to do the same thing to. So you'll turn it off towards the patient side, and off is going to be whichever direction this is pointing. You're going to prime this one more time. Turn it back off to the cap. Go ahead and swap this one out. And you'll put the new cap on. So at this point, when you're going to link these off to these caps from now on until you zero the other one. So then you'll need to go ahead and inflate your pressure bag. And to do that, make sure you flip this to where it's open here. You're going to pump it up, it's going to take a minute to kind of get everything going. But you'll want to pump it up to where you see green coming out, which is going to be around 300 millimeters of mercury. Always takes a minute. So you can start seeing the green come out through here now. The last thing you need to remember to do once you get your pressures where you want it is you have to flip this off to the bag. Otherwise, it's going to slowly leak out of here and you're going to lose your pressure. And this needs to be pressurized before the physicians are ready to insert it. 
Um, once I have everything kind of set up and prime right before we hook it up to the R-line, I usually just flush it one more time just to make sure that we've got all the air out. The physicians at that point, this will be their catheter, and the way you can facil facilitate helping them is have a core prep ready for them to kind of prep whatever area you're using. Um, once they get the catheter in and pull the needle out, you'll hand this to them. This needs to be sterile. So you can twist this off and just make sure that you keep the end of this clean and sterile while they're hooking it up to the heart line. The physician will usually sew it in place and then they'll put a bio patch over it and then one of the big tech nerves. And these are better just for securing everything than the small ones, but you could use a small one in a pinch if you can't get access to these, but these should be in all of your L cards and in your trauma rooms as well. And then after that, you need to have your R line cable. So on these monitors here, the R line cables is going to go into this pressure transducer. If you have one of the end tunnel CO2 ones, you may have an extra transducer available to you. It doesn't really matter which one you use, just as long as you activate it on the monitor. So to do that, you'll see once this monitor's up, you can click here. And it has this on ICP right now, actually. So you can click that's your pressure transducer. You'll change the label to Art Line, and then you'll click Activate. So at that point, this is ready to go and ready for you to hook it up to them. So once the physician has this hooked up to the patient, you will plug in the transducer. This here, the flush needs to be at the level of the heart. Um, what we normally do down here is we'll tape it to the patient's chest on whichever side is going to be the most out of the way you can do right or left. Um, and the best way to do that is to use the foam tape. The other tape is going to kind of move around too much and the foam tape does a really nice job of kind of patting it and keeping it from rolling around too much on the patient. So once you have this on the patient's chest and everything's hooked up, you'll need to zero your R line. So to do that, it really helps have a second person to do this, but you can just hit zero on the monitor and then hit zero art. And what you'll do when you do that is you're going to flip this off to the patient. So this is your patient one here. So you'll turn your cord off to the patient. You'll go open to air. And then you're going to hit zero. You're going to wait for it to beep a second time. Once it beeps a second time, you're zeroed. And you can go ahead and put this back on and make sure you open it and back up to this valve here. So what you should get at that point, this isn't hooked up to the patient, but you should have a nice kind of S wave showing a pulse on here. It's kind of hard to mimic without that, but it should have a nice kind of sine wave that correlates with what their heart rate is. And the other thing that you may need to do, depending on what their pressure is, is you may need to optimize the scale so you can actually see the waveform better. To do that, you're just going to click on the R line and you're going to scroll down and you're going to hit optimum scale. And what that's going to do Right now, it's going between 0 and 180 millimeters of mercury. If the pressure is much lower than that, this will make that scale a little bit smaller so you can see your waveform better. And then it should spit out your systolic and pressure meter. That's it.